Hi, I'm David Fisher, and I'm here once again with PIMCO's Group CIO, Dan Iveson, to talk about some of the recent discussions taking place in PIMCO's Investment Committee, or IC. Thanks for joining us, Dan. Thanks, David. So we've seen a remarkable recovery in markets uh, since March, and that recovery is even more remarkable in the face of a global economy that has seen quite a significant decline. So in the U.S., for instance, the economy lost more jobs in April than it gained in the prior uh, 11 years. And while we've seen some recovery uh, in the economy, there are also signs uh, that perhaps things are work worsening in terms of the virus. Uh, so how is the Investment Committee handling this uncertain investment environment where there seems to be a disconnect between asset prices and the real economy? So in terms of the current, um, you know, current Investment Committee thinking, um, first of all, uh, we think that the worst is behind us uh, in terms of the economic shock. Uh, we think in the base case, at least, uh, the virus impact on economies is waning, uh, but it's waning uh, in a highly uneven manner. So we're in for a, a very bumpy ride. Uh, we're in for an uneven recovery and a frustratingly slow recovery across most key regions of the world. So this is an environment, again, to be cautious and be careful, acknowledge the fact that we're well off the lows across most markets, and it's time to really, really look to leverage large teams, focus a lot more on bottoms-up analysis. If we uh, become a bit more constructive on the recovery picture, if we begin to see signs of more significant virus containment, then we'll put the you know, pedal on the gas, so to speak, look to go on the offense a bit more. So let's talk a little bit about sectors and asset classes. I know the IC focuses on a concept called concentric circles that it uses as a framework for assessing risk and return across asset classes and, and sectors. So how is the IC applying this framework today and where is it finding value, finding opportunities for investors? Sure. So, so this is a, um, a you know a simple but helpful framework. It in fact turned out to be an effective framework that we used during the last global financial crisis back in the 06, 07, 08, uh, 09 period. And what it does is it lists assets uh, in a circular fashion, starting from the core, uh, which represents the highest quality, most liquid assets. As you migrate out the circle up to the outer layers, you get into much more risky segments of the market segments of the investment universe that are more complex, that have less natural sponsorship, but in many instances, if priced appropriately, offer the potential for the highest returns. We have a tendency to want to focus, at least early on in the recovery period, on some of those assets that are closer to the core, assets that may provide value because of recent market uncertainty, market volatility, but can recover even if the economy were to surprise on the downside. So in thinking about then those concentric circles, are there any sectors or asset classes that particularly stand out to you as, as offering attractive value right now? We continue to like these core inner perimeter uh, assets. One of our favorite recent sectors have been agency mortgage-backed securities. So we think that's an area of the market where you benefit from very high credit quality, very high relative liquidity, policy support in the base case, and the potential ability to earn attractive high quality yield in an environment that we think is going to continue to mean relatively range bound interest rates. We think the credit sensitive sectors remain attractive, but they're moving back closer to fair value from our perspective. So this is an area where uh, although we continue to see value, we're becoming much more selective. We had talked now for many years about the anticipated resiliency of global and in particular U.S. housing markets in the face of even significant economic weakness. We're certainly not out of the woods yet, but we do see a sector that we expect to remain fairly resilient. So housing-related credit-type exposure continues to be a key theme for us across the platform uh, as well. Then finally, financials, banks on a global basis are going to struggle from an earnings perspective in the current environment. But again, as bond investors, we're most focused on earning our coupon and getting our money back. And we think from a capital perspective, most major global banks are in a position where their capital position, uh, their cautious management approach are leading some, to some attractive and fairly defensive opportunities for fixed income investors as well. So, you know, the bottom line is that Although we're cautiously optimistic over the intermediate term, we as investors need to accept the fact that there are going to be setbacks. So we're trying to be very, very careful not to be overconfident, 
to be careful, particularly in assets that are much more sensitive to this economic recovery, and instead looking for areas um, across the fixed income universe, utilizing a global opportunity set that provide attractive base case returns, have strong inherent fundamentals, and in some cases, the added benefit of what we anticipate to be ongoing policy support. And probably the most important uh, comment I can make is that uh, we've talked about how challenging uh, of an environment this is uh, to be an investor. It's obviously a very, very challenging time uh, for all of us uh, on both a personal and a professional basis. So we really, again, appreciate uh, the relationships, appreciate the support. Uh, we're thinking about uh, all of our clients around the globe. Uh, we look forward to continuing this dialogue and we wish everyone uh, continued safety uh, and a good, uh, good remainder uh, of the year. Great. Thanks, Dan. And thanks to all of you for joining us. We'll see you next time.